We coming for everything in 2022. That was Lamar Jackson's response to a fan who was shocked yet impressed that despite everything that happened this season, Lamar Jackson still had 10 minutes worth of a highlight tape. And when you think about it, that is pretty crazy. It, it really is. Um, but this season was also pretty crazy. It really was. Uh, because this was a season that a lot of Ravens fans, and I'm sure Ravens players too, uh, had very, very high hopes for. Uh, you saw how we going into free agency and the draft, the Ravens had several different holes. But they addressed them, and they addressed them for the most part uh, in a major way. Um, really, the only question mark was how Alejandro Villanueva was going to be for them at right tackle. But even still, even if he wasn't the best right tackle in the world, we still felt like, all right, we'll be straight, though, because we got so many other pieces around this team, offense, defense, special, like we are set. And then even after the draft, the biggest question mark was, man. Um, well, we drafted a Dafe away. Uh, he didn't really produce many sacks. We know he got a crazy amount of pressure, and he got this crazy amount of speed, too. He got the athleticism, but, okay, let's just hope it translates into production uh, on the field. And then we got Tyus Bowser, who was going to be getting an increased role uh, for the first time in his career, like a really increased role. He was really going to be starting. So we were, like, kind of unsure how the pass rush was going to be. So what did the Ravens do? Boom, they ended up signing Justin Houston. So this team was like so complete and so many Ravens fans were like, oh, oh yeah, we, oh, we about to make some noise, baby. We about to make some noise. But then guy after guy after guy after guy after play after play after play after play. After play. So many people just kept going down and it was something that just kept happening every single week. Every single week. And then... um. So many people will compare it to 2015, but I'd be like, no, it's not like 2015. It's, it's really not because we still got our quarterback. And then, boom, Lamar Jackson ended up going down for the rest of the season, too. Um, but the Ravens, they, they were still competitive, but not competitive enough because they ended up losing uh, the last six and they eliminated themselves from the playoffs. And now here on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, Ravens are watching the Bengals and the Rams, two teams who they faced uh, three times this season. The Bengals twice and the Rams once. Um, and in the first Bengals game, it was competitive all through the third quarter. And then stuff just started going haywire uh, and it got ugly. Um, and then the Rams game, oh, that, that game was probably my one of the most painful games for me this season. The Rams game and the Packers game. Um, but now it's on to next year. And officially after this game today, It'll be on to next year for everybody. Um, and the Ravens are a team that you just, a lot of fans feel like if they just stay healthy, if they just stay healthy, they can make some noise. But we know that despite uh, what happened this past season, Ravens still have a lot of work to do with the roster because not everybody that was here last year is going to be back. It's going to be some people that get cut. It's going to be some people that get traded. It's going to be new people brought in, new free agents, new draft picks, of course. The roster is going to be different. But the fact that a lot of the cornerstone players are still going to be here, like a Lamar Jackson, like a Marlon Humphrey, uh, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Rashad Bateman, Hollywood Brown, Mark Andrews, uh, and, and you, you just hope that these guys can all be healthy. And you hope that they can return healthy, especially like a Marcus Peters. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But Lamar Jackson, his sentiments for next season, I think they felt by a lot of Ravens fans. Now, something else that has been buzzing when it's come to the Ravens, speaking of next season, is something that happens before the season starts. And that is free agency. And boy, Ramey, Hoodie Ramey, that boy has been pushing Honey Badger to the Ravens for the longest. He's expected to be a free agent. It does not seem like, uh, I mean, if it's, it, everything's not up to the fans. We know that. But if it was based off of Honey Badger, Tyron Matthews' response to Chiefs fans, it does not seem like he would want to be there. It does not seem like he feels like he would be welcomed back uh, by 
uh, Chiefs fans. But again, some fans don't they they don't they don't speak for everybody because there's I'm sure there's some fans that will like are over him as a player for the Chiefs, and there are a lot of fans that still love him as a player for the Chiefs and want him to uh, return. But Hoodie Ramey and and a lot of other people too have been um, doing a lot of posts about. Uh, Tyron Matthew, I know Ravens Realm, he did it too. Uh, and then people have been making their little jersey swaps, some a little cleaner than others. But hey, y'all keep doing y'all thing. But Ty- Tyron Matthew, he's been noticing it, and he said, "Whoa, y'all Ravens fans are relentless. Y'all, y'all keep this up." He said, "I kind of like it though." But then he ended up deleting it. But hey, once it's on the internet, it's on the internet forever. So even if you delete something, we all saw it, Tyron Matthew. But Hey, if it was up to us Ravens fans, we would get everybody on the squad. We would get everybody on the team. Every single player that we wanted, they would be here. But we'll see how uh, Eric DaCosta feels about uh, Tyron Matthew. And we'll just see how Eric DaCosta feels about whatever free agents are available for the Ravens to have their selection from. Uh, NFL has been pretty busy, uh, even though this is the last game. Um, Obviously, with the Super Bowl coming up today, uh, it, it depends on how you look at it Because I know a lot of Ravens fans have do, been doing a lot of comparisons To the way that the Ravens get down And the way that the uh, Bengals and the Rams got down When it's come to the Super Bowl The Rams, this is what, their second Super Bowl in, uh, what, four years? Was it, was it, yeah, four years, I think um, And the Rams obviously have a all-in approach they go all in every year. They do not care about first round draft picks. They don't care about second, third. They don't care about draft picks. They do not care. They will use those draft picks to acquire proven players to join the team right here, right now. So they can just go all out and be in a Super Bowl. And hey, it's worked for them. It's worked for them. I know people keep talking about, oh man, well just imagine the, uh, the cap ramifications. Depends on how you look at it. Me, I would take, uh, what, two Super Bowls in four years and then a, a year of bad cap, maybe even two years of bad cap. Because just because you got bad cap doesn't even necessarily mean you'll be a bad team. But I, w- I would take that all day. Then you look at the Bengals approach. Uh, and, and even with the Rams, I believe there was something that said that they actually have the sixth highest number of drafted players on their team. So even though they, they do be going all out for some of these players, a lot of the, their own players got drafted by the Rams. So that says a lot. But another thing that has been a key part in the Rams' success has been their health. They've been very healthy uh, for the most part. Now, then you look at the Bengals' approach. The Bengals, um, they went from, what, two wins to four wins to this year being in the Super Bowl. They've obviously had some very high draft picks uh, over the years, uh, and they have been struggling for a very, very long time. Uh, but Joe Burrow obviously was a huge difference maker uh, on the team, and then Jamar Chase, a huge difference maker on the team. They got a lot of difference makers on the team. And then you look at their uh, the free agency. They, they went out of their way this year with spending some bread in free agency, and it paid off. Now, they, ha- they had the bread to spend. Because Bengals, they have not been known to be big spenders. But they had the bread to spend, and they spent it. They got um, uh, Mike Hilton. They got a Wouzie. They, got, uh, they brought in Eli Apple. Um, they got DJ Reader. They got Trey Hendrickson. Um, and they got uh, Von Bell. Um, oh, I know I'm missing somebody, too. But my point is the Bengals, they did a mix of drafting, but they, they went out and got impact players. They got playmakers. And you have seen all of those guys, everybody, whether you like them or not, you've seen all of those guys make plays for the Bengals. Ravens got to be taking notes. Now, I don't expect them to take a, a Rams approach and be trading away all their first round draft. That's, they're not going to do that. We know they're not going to do that. But I would love to see the Ravens just... Get a little more aggressive. A little more aggressive. We know Eric DaCosta, he's like, he's kind of aggressive. But he's like, ah, nah, I ain't going to do all that. He's like, ah, ooh, no, 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 I don't want to. But with, with Eric DaCosta, he is a, uh, he's a finesse. That's a good way to put it. He's a finesse. 
If he can get somebody for cheap, if he sees like, all right, oh, fifth round pick for Marcus Peters, great job. Oh, fifth round pick for Calais Campbell, oh yeah, great job. But if I gotta go hide in my fifth round picks, I don't know about that one, baby. So he's like, I don't want to say cheaply aggressive, but he's a different kind of aggressive. And I know Ravens ain't got all the money in the world, um, but this is a big off season for him. This is such a big off season for him. It is huge because he has to get it right. He has to. Free agency, the draft, uh, they're just constructing it. And again, last year he did a good job constructing the roster. But this year, it gets that much harder. It gets that much tougher. Because now, Lamar ain't on no rookie deal no more. Oh, well, he is still on his rookie deal, but that price tag is not at 1.7 mil no more. It's at about 23 mil. So, Lamar said, hey, they, they coming for everything in 2022. Eric DaCosta, he got to come for everything in 2022 as well. So does Harbaugh. So does Roman. So does uh, Mike McDaniel. Uh, or McDonald, excuse me. Um, so does Lamar. Everybody. Everybody got to step up their game. Everybody. Everybody. If the Ravens are going to even make a bit of noise next year. Everybody got to step it up. Because it takes everybody working as a unit to get this thing right. So if they're going to come for any little thing in 2022, yeah, they better step it up. So, and again, w w when you look at the Rams and the Bengals, even for whoever loses this game, they, they made it to the Super Bowl. So their approach has clearly worked. And these are explosive offenses, both of them. Uh, offenses that can score some points, both of them. They're not lockdown defenses. They're not. But... They are playmaking defenses. They got playmakers on both sides of the ball. And that's what Ravens need more of. They need more playmakers on both sides of the ball, especially defense. But they could use more offense as well. And, so, and you could also look at it like, man, the Ravens actually have some playmakers on the uh, offensive side of the ball. They have more playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. But a lot of times they just... Not used, their, their skill sets aren't used to the best of their ability. So, again, Ravens got to step it up. Lamar, he got to step it up by getting it to those playmakers. Offensive line got to step it up so Lamar can get it to those playmakers. Uh, those playmakers, they got to catch the ball. They got to make plays. They also got to be put, put in position to make plays. It's, it's, it's everybody. It's everybody. It's not just one person. It's everybody who got to step this thing up. So, We'll see exactly how they do it. Team, keep it clean. Love y'all. Hopefully, we could come for everything, just like Lamar in 2022. We'll see how this year goes. But I love y'all. Appreciate y'all supporting. And just like the Ravens, when it comes to being in the Super Bowl ever since 2012, I'm out.